Well, hello there. This is Vichal, the chess noob, learning and having fun with chess. It's the end of 2023 and I wanted to do a bit of a year in review, uh, particularly using chess.com's uh, analytics and some of their tools. I play most of my online games on chess.com. Uh, let's go take a look. Now, firstly, uh, chess.com this year has made a really great summary tool. So let's have a look at that first. So if you have chess.com, here it is, that sort of 2023 with the uh, <laughs> brilliant moves and blunders. Let's go take a look. All right, so let's review your 2023 year in review. Let's click down. So I don't play that many games now. So this year, um, so far, I'm recording this uh, just before Christmas. I've played just shy of 500 games. Now, I know some of you probably would have played thousands. I play on average, you know, one, maybe two games a day. Sometimes I play a bit less. In fact, in December, I've actually opted to take a little bit of a break uh, and I haven't actually played very many games this month. Uh, but yeah, on average, I, I play so one or two games, uh, one, two games a day and, you know, I'm not too unhappy with that uh, with that sort of win ratio, winning about 55% of the time, losing about 40. Some draws, that's all right. And my longest streak, 581 days, that's longer than 99% of other players. Uh, I, it was interesting, uh, you know, a couple of days ago when I looked at that, they actually gave it to a slightly higher uh, number of uh, significant figures. Uh, it was 99.7, so three standard deviations, uh, more than uh, more than the typical player uh, on chess.com. And so I am on the site very, very regularly. And I think, you know, in terms of enjoying and playing, and maybe even improving chess, I think the regularity is probably more important than necessarily just the volume of games. I've played people in 58 countries, uh, sorry, 78 countries uh, this year, it's cool. I've won 275 online games, top 7% of live chess players. So, you know, played continuously more than three standard deviations, but you know, only about two standard deviations in terms of, um, in terms of actual number of games won. My best win was against a 1900, so 1970 uh, rated player. I actually had a look at this game. Uh, you know, it, it's kind of an accident of history. I think, you know, maybe, uh, God Fence 09 had logged out or something else happened because this was a game where I won in one move. I made one move, I waited for a bit, and then they disconnected and I won. So I'm not sure that really counts. Uh, I played against 254 of my friends. That's cool. Uh, and my best chess friend was the nut job. Played 21 games. So the nut job, uh, when I first friended, um, this player, I was significantly sort of more ahead on my chess journey, but the nut job, who I think is a younger player, is now way better than me. I think they're rated in about the 1500s now. They're starting to play tournaments, you know, doing well in tournaments, so that's really, really good. They're a real aficionado of the Vienna game as well. I'm not sure I can beat them in the Vienna anymore. Solved 84 puzzles. I'm not a big puzzle, uh, puzzle player. Hardest puzzle yet, 1906 yet, yeah, I'm not a big puzzle player. And I think this is where chess.com does a little bit of promotion themselves. So something about mittens, yeah, mittens was fun. Um, speaking of which, with mittens, you should watch my, uh, uh, at the beginning of the year, I made the ch uh, the cat chess bot series of just uh, short humorous videos. I'm gonna sort of link it, uh, link it up there. You know, have a look at that series. I thought that was a bit of fun. Um, yeah, most watched chess video from chess.com. Yeah, whatever. And most popular meme. And so this is about traps. You know, what fly like that. Mice should be ashamed. Come on, bear, so obvious. Hey, look, free queen. So that's a trap. You know, oh no, my queen trap. And if you know this particular position, you know, if bishop captures, then there is a force line of mate, starting with bishop captures the um, the f2 pawn, and then the other bishop um, comes to uh, g4, and then it's a win. All right, uh, a little bit of a summary. Go back to the beginning. Let's go back. So I'm also going to show you uh, chess.com's 
Uh, now, where are we? They've got the insights. And here we go, the learn, so insights. Now, insights might be relatively something that's only available to people with a diamond subscription. But I think it's actually really worthwhile, like, you know, to really think about getting a subscription. So I'm gonna show you uh, my insights for Rapid, almost, uh, almost completely only play rapid and let's do it for the uh, for the whole year as well so starting from let's say 1st of January so today uh, let's get just before Christmas uh, set and there we go so just looking at games of rapid um, I've so played 366 games so almost pretty close to 50 50 and as I said you know I haven't played a lot many games uh, in December uh, like last, uh, like I didn't play very many games in January either. So, you know, take a bit of a break over the holiday period in Australia. Uh, and I sort of play quite a bit more in the middle of the year. Accuracy. Yeah, look, I haven't been doing so great. I think I've had some runs of doing okay and runs of not doing quite so well. And the interesting thing here is, you know, in terms of you can see accuracy sort of over the year, bit of a dip. You know, at times, you know, it wasn't doing well in November at all. Uh, pretty, uh, doing pretty well, you know, at the end of last year. And basically, I've been trying to just to, uh, I suppose I've been working a little bit less hard in chess. You know, being, wi being willing to play uh, moves which I know aren't so good, but looking like they could be interesting, could be fun. Um, and if you look at sort of, uh, sort of accuracy by move number, so generally this is a usual pattern for most people, accurate right at the beginning. Uh, and... If I look at so by piece color, yeah, pretty much the same level of accuracy, both uh, both as white and black, um, compared to past performance. Yep, so no real worsening compared to past performance over this year compared to before. To similar players, and this one's quite interesting. And you can see, uh, so similar players is the yellow line. I'm probably a little bit more accurate than similar players in the middle game and in the end game and that probably explains why so overall i'm still winning slightly more than what i'm losing so i, I probably am uh, slightly improving uh, but not necessarily doing better than other players in the opening but you know it's slightly creeping ahead in the middle and end game so very very sort of interesting bit of information you know results by opponent rating and you can see, so in the 1300s, it's pretty much close to 50-50, 1400s, close to 50-50 as well. So my sort of true sort of ratings have averaged over the year. If you think that the rating, you know, at the rating you're at, you should win half the games, lose half the games. I'm probably somewhere in the uh, so mid-1300s, low-1400s, I think. And game results, um, so this is, you know, how do you win? So by so resignation, checkmate, abandonment, timeout. Um, it's a little bit hard to really see, um, but you know, it looks like um, for me, so games won by, yep, so people tend to resign against me a little bit more uh, than maybe on average. So that, that's that's pretty interesting. Uh, that might suggest that I play some slightly trickier positions. Games you drew by. Um, now, I don't have very many number of draws. So, you know, even here it's it's like uh, only six games and, and whatnot. So, so I think this needs to be taken with a grain of salt from a statistical perspective. Like most of my draws are by repetition, you know, some by agreement. I suppose that's what you would expect. Games you lost by, yep, I, I tend to resign a bit. You know, I know I've made some videos, never give up, never surrender, but to be honest, if I'm in a completely dead loss position, I, I do tend to tend to resign. Now, I'm particularly sort of in the intermediate level. Uh, you know, you might as well resign. I think at a beginner level, you shouldn't, but I, I do tend to resign when I know it's just dead lost. Um, game shape. So this is interesting because um, you know they talk about sort of the giveaway, balanced games, smooth games, sharp games, sudden games. The question is how is this really sort of determined? Uh, I suppose. So most of my games, um, there was a giveaway. So one person and they gave it away. Now I know this happens to me quite a bit. You know I, I get a fairly winning position and then I just blunder something. I underthink something. Sunday, a sudden close game that was lost by a mistake. You know, that's probably 
where I, I'm at a bit. And of course, this is with all games, so that might have occurred to the opponent as well. The intense games, I'm pretty, uh, pretty, uh, yeah, pretty happy with the idea that a lot of my games are intense, which means tricky, you know, complicated lines. I kind of like to play those lines, particularly when it's very, very tactical. Uh, so balance games here, and again, you know, because some of these categories has really low numbers, statistically, what does it really mean? Let's have a look at the, um, so sort of the sharp game. So yeah, so almost 50-50, roughly, uh, and sudden and a giveaway. So sudden, so I tend to win the sudden one, so that's where the opponent would make a mistake against me. And giveaway, yeah, again, close to 50-50. And accuracy, so balanced, yeah. So I imagine that these would probably be things like the Italian uh, game, uh, very close line. So yeah, so accuracy, not too bad. Now the sudden, where there was a good number, so that's where I would win uh, and the opponent sort of so, uh, so we saw before because I tend to win most of these and where they make a mistake. So here I would be where I'm getting a high accuracy game, maybe down the line of theory, maybe there's a trap and the opponent blunders something. And giveaway, probably not too different from overall. Game phases, so games ended in the opening, middle game, end game. Yeah, so most of my games enter into the middle game and end game, so the opening, so these would be all the quick wins. A piece color, yeah, not a big difference. Similar players. I'm probably winning more games, so seven and a half percent compared, excuse me, compared to four percent in the opening. So that's probably from some of my repertoire where I do play some opening gambits, opening traps, and winning right in the opening there. Um, yeah, it's close to double, but you know, most games still into the middle game and uh, end game. Accuracy by phase. Yeah, sure. Results for games. So in the opening, yep. So if uh, if it ends in the opening, I tend to win. Okay. So that's just you know with my quick wins and all those tricky lines I like to play in the middle. Middle game, I usually still winning. End game, if it gets to the end game, I'm often losing. That's probably because I'm dragging the game out, even though I'm losing. All right. So how well do you perform in your ten most played openings? All right, so Vienna, doing okay. So Sicilian defense, this would be where I'm playing against the Sicilian because I don't personally play the Sicilian. Yep, doing pretty well. Bishop's opening, I never played a bishop's opening. So this would be against the players playing the bishop's opening against me. I do really well against the bishop's opening. Kara Khan, doing really well, winning you know, over 75%. Admittedly, not big numbers. Now, French, I know I'm not good at the French. I hate defending, playing against the French. And you can see I'm, I'm doing really poorly. And I think one of the things I need to do for 2024 is really to develop um, my, a, a repertoire, uh, an approach against the French. I've looked at a few things, you know, the um, uh, Dima Derm Gambit. I, I think I won't play that actually. I recently discovered, I think the Rati defense against the French defense. Uh, I'm gonna, look down that line that looks quite uh, quite positive to me so a bit more solid not very gambity and that's the thing with the friend the gambits often don't work so well against it i do pretty well against the scandinavian as well now everything else we're looking at pretty small numbers here so can't really say very much statistically but you know uh, to Vienna, okay, Sicilian, okay, but some of these other uh, moves that the, the black will play, like the bishop's opening, Karakan, Scandinavian, I do well, I need to do better against the French defense. Let's have a look at black, so when I'm playing black, so yeah, close to 50-50 for the Italian, I, I don't have any killer lines against Italian, it's just really solid. Queen's pawn opening, look, 1d4, it's pretty good. No, England gambit is good, but you know, I lose some of those as well. But at least it's close to 50-50, I suppose. Rui Lopez, so it looks like I'm not doing so well. Um, look, the Schliemann defense or the Yanish gambit is super fun to play. Uh, however, as you get into the intermediate level, often Rui Lopez uh, player will sort of know some of the lines. Uh, I don't because I've not investigated it too far, sometimes when it goes down a, a line I'm not so familiar with, because it is a very sharp and complicated line, sometimes I might make mistakes. So I think I need to develop there a little bit. So these are all other Queen's Pawn opening games. It's okay. Again, looking now at very, uh, so very, um, yeah, low, low number games now. All right. 
performance, some mastery, so average number of book moves you make in a game when you are the one to leave book move first. Okay, so average I'm making almost four four move four book moves uh, based on your games. Okay. I wonder how, what this graph means here. Yeah, so average number 3.8. Okay. Put black. About the same. Not too different. Yeah, okay. So Vienna game, leaving when you leave book move first. I think that might depend on what happens, really. Um, yeah, it depends really on how black responds. Yep, Sicilian. Yeah, what if I'm playing black with the... Uh, Vienna. Does that show up? Oh yeah, it's not too different. Okay. Yeah, a little bit hard to interpret this actually. So still in defense. Yeah, so often this will be where we would be playing the, um, the Smith Moore Gambit. Uh, and yeah, often it's just easy to play book moves because they're kind of obvious. All right, so forks. So probably the most important thing is what, how does it look like? to similar players so I tend to find um, more pawn forks actually I tend to find most forks compared to similar players compared to past performance I'm doing better with the rook otherwise not too different okay so for pins similar players so I tend to miss bishop pins a bit compared to similar players otherwise doing well with the queen and the rook past performance okay maybe it's a statistical glitch you know, when, you, when there's not large numbers, sometimes they might just depend on the games which occur. So mates, so f the number of mating ones found, so no, missing a number of mating ones. I really should never miss a mating one. That's an undercalculation because you can win right away. Uh, mate in twos, I'm surprisingly finding a lot of them. Mate in threes, mate in fours. Now, again, small numbers can't really have much takeaway from very small numbers. Mate in ones are the ones which I'm really missing. Compared to similar players, I am so picking up probably more mates um, than similar players. Past performance, yep. So particularly made in ones, made in twos, where you've got the larger numbers. Yeah, so yeah, probably about the same. I think could do a little bit better. Hanging pieces, pieces you left hanging. Now again, it's a metric that you need to take with a grain of salt because some of these might be gambits. I think. Yeah, so. So 70%, <laughs> no, so a lot of uh, hanging pawns, but these are gambits, they're often pawns. Free pieces, so pieces your opponent left hanging, where I found them, where I missed them, compared to, yeah, so very similar to other players, past performance, about the same really. And again, some of this may, again, relate to playing more gambits. Moves, all right, so, um, finding you know half a percent of my moves I think that's what it means are brilliant moves that's pretty cool now let's compare by piece color um, no big difference for about by similar players yep so please see that I, I, I sort of tend to find quite a bit more um, brilliant moves compared to similar players and that's partly because I think uh, with my playstyle I'm quite willing to sacrifice pieces if I think there might be an advantage. So yeah, compared to similar players I'd find more brilliant moves and you know, small percentages but proportionally it's quite a bit larger. Best moves, excellent moves, yep, okay so relatively fewer blunders but maybe making slightly more inaccuracies and mistakes, okay. So I suppose my uh, I'm a little bit more accurate in some areas, less accurate in others. And, and over time, you can see I was probably playing more accurately at the beginning of the year compared to at the end of the year. At the beginning of the year, I was trying to play more solidly. I was also high rated up to about 1400. Here, I'm sort of now in the mid 1200s, but I'm sort of trying to play sort of very aggressive gambit lines, you know, lines which I know are probably not great, but because they look like they could be fun, I probably need to switch back to slightly more accurate mode. Uh, moves by pieces. Uh, look, it's hard to really interpret what any of this means. And, um, and so let's compare myself to other players uh, and you can see 
Um, it's about the same really. Yeah, not too sure what this means. Accuracy by piece. Um, I'm the blue, so you would sort of expect me to be mostly more accurate. But it looks like maybe I've got a relative deficiency uh, with my bishop. So on average, other players at my level are more accurate to bishop than myself. So I may need to really uh, have a think about my bishops and also you know, practice a little bit with sort of diagonals. Castling, yeah, it's hard to know what this means. When you castled, results when you castled. Yeah, I'm actually going to move past that. Now, time of day, um, not too different, I suppose, in terms of accuracy, relatively similar. Uh, but I do play most of my games you know, sensibly, so morning, afternoon, evening, very few at night. Um, results per time of day, like, looks, looks like it's much worse at night, but that's only, uh, that's only a total of um, 13 games, I think, so very few games proportionately. But not doing well at night, probably shouldn't do runs of games at night. That might be where I do runs of losses, which is why it looks so bad. Uh, day of the week, um, yeah, and accuracy. But day of the week, yeah, you know, midweek working, a bit tired. Seems to be best on the weekend. That makes sense, doesn't it? Uh, results by day of the week, yep. Winning much more on Saturdays. Uh, and probably yeah, Saturdays and Sundays, I think. Oh, Friday looks pretty good too. Yeah, well, what is it with Friday? Why am I winning so many on Friday? Oh, who knows? Uh, some of these might be random, but definitely on average looking like I'm doing better on the weekend. World map, people who have I played. Uh, let's have a quick look at list view. Like once the numbers get small, doesn't mean very much. So pretty much 50-50 against sort of Americans. You know, maybe it's just slight sort of advantage over Indians. Doing poorly against Brazilians, you know. What is it with Brazilians? Good at, good at chess? Seemingly like I'm doing okay against uh, Canadians and Egyptians and uh, and the people from the Philippines. Uh, and, but, you know, we are getting down to pretty small numbers here. You know, so the uh, statistically it's hard to know what, what it means. You know, win one, extra one, or lose extra one can make a big difference in the percentage. All right, so that's my year in review and sort of some things I need to look at, particularly I need to improve uh, my response to the French defence, need to look at my bishop play. Have you had a look at um, sort of a review of your games on chess.com? What do they find? Share those uh, in the comments below. In any case, um, happy new year and I hope you have a good one for 2024.